So I'm Karen, and we're going to be doing the topic of death penalty. Um, the death penalty is a form of punishment that has been used by humans for thousands of years. The first death penalty laws date back to the 18th century BC in Babylon, and the colonists brought capital punishment with them overseas, and is still used in many states today. Uh, the capital punishment is a barbaric and ineffective form of punishment, and the death penalty should be abolished in America for the following reasons. First, the death penalty is not a deterrent of crime. Second, the cost of executing someone is more than the cost of keeping the criminal in prison for life. And third, there is a chance of executing someone who is innocent. To my first point, that death penalty is not a deterrent of crime, um, some criminologists claim that they have statistically proven that when an execution is publicized, more murders can occur that day or weeks that, or the weeks that follow. A good example is the Lindbergh kidnapping, which, in which um, a number of states adopted the death penalty for crime like this, but figures show just that kid, kidnapping actually increased and uh, publicity may encourage crime instead of preventing it. Grant McClellan claims that in 1958, the 10 states that had the fewest murders included New Hampshire, Iowa, Minnesota, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Wisconsin, Rhode Island, Utah, North Dakota, and Washington. Um, and four of these 10 states had abolished the death penalty, while the 10 states which had the most murders, uh, from 8 to 14 killings per 100,000 population, were Nevada, Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, and Virginia, and all of those states actually enforced the death penalty. So this is evidence that fear of the uh, death penalty will not um, necessarily reduce crime rates. Um, the next point, that co the cost of executing someone is actually more than keeping them in prison for life. Um, the death penalty can cost two to five times more than, ex uh, than keeping them in, in prison for the rest of their life. Um, this is due to endless appeals, additional requirements, and the overall legal hassle of the execution process. Um, there was a study done in California in 2011. Um, the, the study said that approximately 1,940 capital trials since um, 1978 had occurred, and the cost per trial was about one million more than non-capital cases, and capital cases um, in California could cost 10 to 20 times more than murder trials that don't involve the pet death penalty. Additional costs are incurred from a multiple multitude of factors. Um, this includes two attorneys per side instead of one, um, multiple investigators, multiple experts in the penalty phase of the trial, extended jury selection process, additional penalty phase, and the longer guilt phase. And my third and final reason would be that there's a chance of actually executing somebody who is innocent and didn't uh, commit the crime in the first place. Um, there was one man by the name of Cameron Willingham who was convicted of murdering his three daughters by burning down his house in 1991. He was later executed in 2004 in Texas, uh, despite the, the fact that the Texas Forensic Science Commission found that the arson claims were doubtful and Willingham's wife disputed the claim that Willingham had killed his daughters to cover up abuse allegations. Governor Rick Perry did not grant a pardon to this man and he was executed. Um, there was also somebody by the name of Ellis Felker who was convicted for the disappearance and murder of a woman in 1981 and he was executed in 1996. Um, an autopsy would later rule out Felker as a suspect, uh, but it altered because it was altered by a technician. After his um, execution, Felker's attorney would receive a box of evidence that was unlawfully withheld by the prosecution, and this evidence included DNA that um, DNA evidence saying that. He wasn't, in fact, the murderer, and there was actually a confe uh, confession by another su suspect. So, um, also, there's the chance of um, putting somebody who's mentally ill to death. Um, some people are born with defects in their brain, and it could cause them to act impulsively, and they have no control over it. Um, there's a 
case where somebody named Kelsey Patterson was executed on May 18, 2004 in Texas despite a 5 to 1 recommendation by the parole board for clemency. Mr. Patterson suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and believed that electronic devices had been implanted in his body and were controlling him. Um, another person, Daniel Bedford, was executed in Ohio um, in in 2011, the Supreme Court refused to block Brett Bedford's execution despite his lawyer's claim that he suffered from dementia and wasn't even competent enough to understand why he was being executed. Um, in, in general, like it doesn't really make any sense to kill somebody in order to show that killing somebody is wrong um, and it's useless and that it doesn't bring the victim back to life. 